you cannot access, you cannot reprocess information, you cannot remix information and knowledge if you don't have the rights to do that. So it's not sustainable to do it uh, unless you have the rights. So one important thing for these possibilities of recombining, restructuring information is the idea of a legal commons. So very briefly, a legal commons is whatever the law and licenses that are derived from the law grant you the right to reprocess, remix, reuse, redistrib redistribute, etc. So basically there are many forms of legal commons. One of them is the public domain. Everything that is into the public domain can be reprocessed, redistributed, etc. Other forms uh, of legal commons are the fair use rights and the exceptions and limitations to copyright. As you know, in Brazil they are very narrow. I don't know the situation here in Spain, but probably they are not much bigger than they are in Brazil. But these are also small things that the law allow you to do, but they're very narrow in the majority of countries. The other way of creating a legal commons is through licensing. So basically using the GNU FDL license or using the Creative Commons license. These are ways that you tell people in general that you allow them to recombine, reprocess your work. Uh, the other way to get these legal commons in place is by means of copyright reform. And that is exactly what is going on in Brazil right now. For the past two years, as a result of the discussions raised by the so-called free culture movement, there is an increasing perception on the Brazilian society that copyright needs to be reformed. So basically, a draft law has been written, and in the next few weeks, it's going to be presented by the Brazilian Congress, to the Brazilian Congress, and hopefully that is going to be an example that copyright can be reformed in order to expand the boundaries of the ways we can reprocess and reproduce and reconnect, recombine information. So that's another uh, point. Okay, for the legal commons, and I get into the last part of my presentation. Peripheries worldwide, las periferias globales, uh, are appropriating the technology to produce knowledge, content, and culture. Tecnobrega is an example, but I want to give you another example of what is going on. There is a phenomenon in Brazil very recently that is called the land house phenomenon. Land house stands for local area network houses. That means computers connected uh, to each other, initially to play games. So people would sit in this room and play games against each other over a local area network. But then the internet connection came. And when that happens, a lot of other people that were not interested in playing games, but simply to use the internet, started going to these places, paying a very small amount of money, sometimes 30 cents of a dollar for one hour of usage of internet. So this phenomenon in Brazil is now massive. It's funny because it's the result of an entrepreneurship that came from down to up, from the bottom to up. So it's, it's really important. For instance, this is a land house. This is another example of land house. This is a land house in a favela. And this is very important because nowadays, it's safe to say that all the Brazilian cities have at least one land house. All the favelas, all the shanty towns have land houses. Indigenous villages in the middle of the Amazon have a land house. So basically, it's a massive phenomenon from an entrepreneurship perspective that is taking internet connection all over the country. So that's people in a land house. And it always started because of games, but then it became like much more than that. And nowadays, there are more than 90 thousand land houses in the country. Remember that Brazil has only 2,000 bookstores. Remember that Brazil has only 2,000 movie theaters, and it has now 90,000 land houses. So I was once 
in this project that is called Revelando Brasis, that is about documentaries uh, about cities with less than 20,000 inhabitants. So it was a room full like this one of people from each of these cities with less than 20,000 inhabitants. And then I decided to run a test. I decided to ask the people saying, who has movie theaters in your city? And then no one raised their hands. Then I asked, who has uh, a bookstore in your cities? No one raised their hands. And then I asked, who has land houses in the cities? And everyone raised their hands. So it's very important to think that these cities before were connected to the outside world only by two ways, either by television or by the post office. And that was it. And nowadays, the internet comes, and with it, all the possibility of knowledge and information and anything you can imagine, you're, be, you're being able to talk back. So it's really a revolution that is going on in the country. And just to give you an example of how powerful this phenomenon is, in 2005, access by internet in Brazil, but through the land houses, represented 17% of everyone that had access in the country. By 2006, it represented 30%. By 2007, it represented 49% of everyone that has access to the internet in Brazil. That means that ev out of every two Brazilians, one Brazilian have access to the internet. To compare it, the green line is, land, is access through the land houses. The red line is access through domiciles and offices, schools, etc. And the bottom blue line is access to public uh, governmental initiatives, for instance, telecentros. So basically, land houses represent 49% of the access. Uh, private spaces represent 40% of the access and governmental initiatives represent 6% of the access uh, in the Brazilian population. So this is really a revolution for knowledge and for education. And I want to finish by showing you a small video that I helped to produce. This is a video that was broadcast uh, by Globo Television in a program called Fantástico. And I participated together with Hermano Viana in the investigation that led to the production of this video. So basically, uh, it's going to be really quick so that you can have a look at what is the impact of these land houses in the country. Alô, 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 fantástico! Alô, telespectadores e internautas de todo o Brasil! Alô, fanqueiras digitais, alô, piriguetes cibernéticas, alô, madames conectadas! Tudo bem na web? Minha mais está chegando direitinho aí? Tá? Conexão estabelecida? Então vamos lá. Gente, o Central da Periferia tá de volta para mostrar como é que a tecnologia tá mudando a cara do Brasil. Oi, gente. Oi! Tem uma lan house perto daqui? Tem! Essa aqui é a nossa lan house aqui na Policica. Vamos ver tudo. Agora eu quero pro Letra Grande, pode ser? Vamos mandar esse vídeo pro Fantástico. Que periferia rima com tecnologia? Totalmente. Liguei meu PC Quando entrei no meu Opus Só dava você Output is a social network by Google. O computador vai ser igual um liquidificador. Qualquer pessoa vai ser mexer o botão de um lado para o outro. No bate-papo, como é que eu vou te dar prazer? 